Okay, let's see how these things works together under the hood. As you already know, a JSON web token made up of three parts. We already saw that. The header, the payload and the signature. Header, payload, signature. Now, the header is just some metadata about the token itself. We already saw that. The payload is the data that we can encode into the token. We can use any uh, data as payload. Uh, and data really that we want. So these two parts, header and payload, are just plain text that we will get encoded, header and payload. But uh, those are encoded but not encrypted. So anyone will be able to decode this header and payload and read. We cannot store any sensitive data in here. But that's not a problem at all because in the third part, so in the signature, is where the things really get interesting. The signature is created using header, payload and this secret. This secret is stored in the server. We are going to see that in our implementation part also. So using this header, payload and secret, uh, this process and this whole process is then called signing the JSON web token. The signing algorithm, the signing algorithm takes header, payload and secret to create a unique signature. Header, payload, secret to create a unique signature. So only this data plus the secret can create the signature. Then together with the header and the payload, this signature from the JWT, which then gets sent to the client. This will get, this will send to the client. Then this client or the browser or the user get this JWT token and save it in the local storage of the browser or oh, and if the client want to access protected route in the server if this client want to if this if this client want to access protected route in the server it will send this token each and every time uh, in every http request then server get the token and verify that token and allow or deny the access to use protected route. Let's see how this thing happened too. Okay, I already told you this client will send the token back in every HTTP request. Once the server receives that JWT to grant access to a protected route, it needs to verify it in order to determine if the user really is who claims to be. In other words, it will verify if no one changed the header and the payload of the token. So again, this verification step will check if no third party actually altered either a header or the payload of the JSON web token that client sent in every HTTP request. So, how does this verification actually work? Uh, well, it's actually quite straightforward. Once the JWT is received, the verification, uh, the verification method in uh, JWT library or something, uh, this uh, JWT, when the JWT is received, the verification will take its header and payload. And together with the secret, secret is uh, saved in the server already. Uh, with, together with the secret is still saved in the server, basically create a test signature. But the original signature that was uh, generated when the JWT was first created is still in the token. Right? And then this original signature and test signature is compared compared uh, it is, is it uh, similar or not and if the test signature and the original signature uh, same then it means the payload and the header have not been modified by the third party because uh, if they had been modified 
the test signature this test signature would have to be different therefore in this case where there has been no alteration of the data we can then authenticate the user and of course if the two signatures are actually different well then it means that someone tampered with the data usually by trying to change in the payload but the third party manipulating payload does of course not have access to the secret so they cannot sign the JWT so the original signature will never correspond to the manipulated data and therefore the verification will always fail in this case and that's the key to make in this whole system work it's a magic that makes JWT so simple but also extremely powerful okay now the time to go and get some hand dirty if you didn't understand those things that's totally fine uh, you will get these things in implementing stage this diagram shows that simple flow uh, that we have discussed let's see first of all browser send post post request that uh, contains user login with username and password those credentials uh, then server uh, gets it and create a JWT uh, with a secret then uh, it returns the JWT to the browser again the browser will save it in local storage then it will send the JWT in each HTTP request to the server send the JWT on the author authorization header if it uh, gets by the server it will check the JWT signature get use information from the JWT and then it send the response to the client 